We're gonna talk wet wading boots and systems today. In the beautiful state of Washington, our small tributary streams just open for the season, so there's a whole bunch of us that are gonna be hitting and walking and wading these small streams. We're getting out of the boat, we're getting out of the raft, and we're doing the ground and pound game out here. And a lot of us use a mix of sandals or wading shoes or boots. And I just wanna to talk to you for a few minutes about the pros and cons of each and help you make a good buying decision or a footwear decision that works well for you. Let's go ahead and go back down to my feet and I'll show you my preferred system uh, for serious wading. The dog is always in the sunlight making the shadow. Uh, we'll start with my system. I wear a Corker's Devil's Canyon boot. There are lots of great boots. This one's very light. It's got a BOA system. I wear these same ones with my waders. I like the BOA because it never comes untied during the day. And then I couple it with this Sims neoprene guard sock, okay? So the deal with the neoprene sock is it's like a wetsuit for your foot. The water's cold when you get in. This is not waterproof, the sock, okay? It is not waterproof at all, nor is it designed to be. It's just designed to hold some water against my skin and let my body heat it up like a wetsuit. And it's very comfortable because the neoprene doesn't change properties when it's wet. It wears great, dries out fast, it doesn't stink like wool socks. Wool socks stay wet in the back of your car and then eventually smell terrible. So the neoprene is a good investment and they're not that expensive. The other nice thing about these guard socks is they roll down so that my laces can't pick up cockaburs and other junk and stuff like that and thorns. I like these cable laces on the BOA system. They're so reliable, but I don't get my laces or those cables caught up and there's a little gator hook right there that I can clip that down. It keeps sand uh, and gravel from getting in my shoes and makes a nice gator. When it comes to pants, I like a quick dry style pant. And one thing you can do is you can actually tuck your pants in uh, around your gator. Uh, if you're in sticks and brush and things like that, that makes a nice tight system. You'll have to tuck them back in a few times during the day, but that's kind of a, a bonus pro tip for you. And I'll link some products in the video description or below there. So that's my preferred system for an all day uh, fishing trip where I'm hiking with boulders and things like that. That's the best system, especially if you're not the strongest waders, boots really, really help. The other thing that's a nice asset is a trekking pole or a true wading staff. And having coached a lot of anglers and led a lot of wade fishing groups, Anglers that have good boots and good footwear and felt soles, or even better yet, felt soles with studs, they move faster. If I say, hey, let's cross the river down here, the person with better traction and better boots, they're the ones that can keep up and they just cover water faster. So that's not for everybody though. Some people want to wear the sandals, okay? Now sandals are great for when you're in situations where you're in the boat, you're out of the boat, it's light, casual wading. Um, you can bang your ankles around wearing these on rocks. They don't stay, uh, they don't support you nearly as well. There is no ankle support on these. They're great for casual wading. I like them for when I'm in and out of my rig, in and out of my boat. But one thing that is really cool about these, if you're like, hey, I'm a sandal person, or I'm looking for a, a set of sandals for casual wading, and I'm not wading big, nasty, boulder strewn currents, Sandals are good. There's definitely a place for them. I wear these sometimes. With the Corker Swiftwater sandal, I can actually take, let's go down here and look at this. I'm not gonna do it on video right now. I've done a review on these, but I can take, because my boots are 11s and my sandals are 11s, I can take my felt soles right off of these Corker boots and I can put them in these sandals. I could even have studded felt soles on these sandals, which is pretty cool. So. They're definitely the best uh, wading sandal out there. Now there are a few wading shoes on the market that are they're real similar to the sandal as far as platform, but they're gonna be primarily closed on the sides. I have a Sims shoe that's wonderful in the boat for a little mix of in the boat and out of the boat. Uh, it's called the Challenger Air Vent shoe. That's a great shoe for in the boat, out of the boat work, but I don't have the ability to like put felt soles or, or anything like that on there. Now the pros of a sandal versus a shoe is the, the, the pros and cons are actually quite similar. You're gonna get pebbles and rocks between your foot and the sole. That's gonna happen, there's no doubt about it. 
The nice thing about the sandal is you can kick your foot in the current a little bit and let the current kind of flush that sand and gravel out of there. You're gonna get more pebbles in there, but it's a lot easier to shake them loose and get them out of there. So the shoe is definitely gonna prevent that a little bit if you get the fully enclosed, like a wading style shoe. But once a rock is inside that shoe, you're unlacing it, you're taking it off, and you're dumping it out. So at Reds, we sell a lot more sandals than shoes when it comes to you know a casual wading uh, footwear solution. But hopefully some of this is helpful. When in doubt, go with a wading boot uh, like this. If you're wading, if you're wet wading a lot, really like really a lot, there are some wet wading specific boots that are cut a little bit narrower and a little bit smaller so that they don't have the accommodation for the extra neoprene of the wader. The guard socks that I'm wearing do not take up as much volume as um, a wader in a sock. A wool sock and a wader boot is much thicker, has much more volume. Therefore, these boots, if you look down at these boots, I do have a fair amount of space in there. There is a little extra room, a little bit more than I'd like. Um, I wouldn't, I would say that if you're doing a lot of summer waiting, it's worth looking at getting a set of boots a size smaller if they're going to be a wet wading exclusive boot for you. Uh, because these, this neoprene sock is about the thickness of just a standard wool sock. So definitely doesn't take up as much volume in the foot. They're a little bit sloppier than I would prefer, but I can wear this boot over the waders or just over uh, that neoprene guard sock. So uh, hopefully that provides some good insights for you and you have a great season of wet wading. It feels great to have the water against your skin and cool off on a hot day. It's part of the joy of fly fishing is being out there actually in the river.